welcome to another episode of the Straight Shooting Rants. Hey, what's up, people? My name is Straight Shooting LJA, and welcome to another episode of the Straight Shooting Rants. Now, you know, one thing I do want to chat about is movies, especially Hollywood movies, and also TV shows as well. So film and TV, let's go with that. Now, one thing that really irks me is superhero films. I'll go with that first, because at the end of the day, for me, the superhero films, the ones that I have seen have been utterly poor, where it's like, I'm a fan of animated series through, um, throughout the 90s, so X-Men, Spider-Man, Batman the Animated Series, among other great ones as well, <clears throat> but those are the three that are top of my list, and for me, the way those tell stories, even though they're superhero stories, you can relate to them, and they're told very, very well. So for me, over the past, well, 20, almost 20 years now, because I think the first Spider-Man movie was like 2002. So it's been one of them ones where it's now been almost 20 years since this slew, absolute deluge of superhero films has been kind of out and about, prevalent. It's like, and it's really ticked me off. I mean, I've seen some where it's just been like, what the hell is this crap? And for me, superhero movies kind of, they do irk me because they'll make a superhero film now out of pretty much anything. And this constant fad of rebooting as well just ticks me off no end. Because how many times have they had to reboot Spider-Man because they've done it badly? How many times have, I mean, they've rebooted what? Mighty Morphin Power Rangers that didn't need a reboot. And apparently, as I speak now in February, 2021, I'm, I'm reading that they're gonna reboot Power Rangers again. It's like, dude, it didn't need a reboot in the first place. Cause that, cause that, 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 that movie that came out I think in 18, it was bang average. It really was. And I was hoping that Chaim Saban's Power Rangers would have been, it would have been good because Jason David Frank was endorsing it, Amy Jo Johnson as well. I was thinking, yeah, this might be decent. I then watch it and it's like, no, it's got none of the charm of the original, but you're still calling it Mighty Morphin. So I'm thinking to myself, if it's a reboot, don't call it Mighty Morphin if you ain't going to make it similar. I mean, obviously, like, not the whole bright spangly gimmick and the awful looking monsters that we grew up with. That was 91, 92, 93. It's like, yeah, everything's evolved, but you didn't have to change it completely. And for me, it's one of them ones where it's like, a lot of these superhero films have just told really poor stories. Um, what's it, X-Men, Days of Future Past. Look how good a saga that was in the anime, in the X-Men animated series from the mid nineties. Brilliant. Apocalypse was amazing. <sighs> and speaking of Apocalypse, I'll come back to that in a second. But then you've got X-Men First Class, the film that tries to rate itself and, and, and review it. Well, X-Men First Class, the movie that tries to rate and review itself and it's average. <laughs> you ain't first class, yeah, but you, ain't, you ain't first class, you're economy. So there's that, but then X-Men Age of Apocalypse, which for me is one of the worst films, actually no, the worst film I've ever seen. I've seen some bad ones, but X-Men Age of Apocalypse ticked me off no end because the story was told so poorly. How can you build up Apocalypse for two hours and then destroy him in 20 minutes and also take Storm down as well? For me, they buried Storm as well as Apocalypse. And then at the end of the film, they had the nerve to have a briefcase shown. And what was on what was on the briefcase? Essex. It's like, wait, hold on. I know you ain't talking about Towie. You're talking about Sinister, Nathaniel Essex. What's the point bringing him in? It's like you've just destroyed his master, the guy he works for constantly during the animated series. And it's like, dude, if you're gonna tell the story, tell it properly. And also Apocalypse in the animated series was so brilliant because number one, he wasn't overused. And number two, they never destroyed or killed Apocalypse. They never did. They got rid of him temporarily because Apocalypse 
in his own words in the animated series, he's not malevolent, he just is. And as Beast says in the animated series, you always need, there's always going to be good and evil. You can get rid of Apocalypse, but he'll just, but the evil will just take another form. So it's one of them where it's like, why get rid of Apocalypse? I look at it as they could have strung out Apocalypse for like three, four movies at least because that storyline is that strong and has so many strands to it. You could just literally rip off the animated series. You could do, you could easily, you could easily just rip that off. You could do Beyond Good and Evil and bring Apocalypse back for that. You could have done, you could have done the Age of Apocalypse as a two part movie saga easily. Cause it was what, a four parter in the animated series. So it's one of them where it's like, God, the storytelling is just terrible. And then it's one of them ones, they're giving, and then you look at Spider-Man. They're literally giving every Spider-Man character or side character and villain their own bloody movies. It's like Michael Morbius, the living vampire. Not, he doesn't need, he doesn't like, you don't need to be doing a Morbius film. And apparently that's due out this year, 2021. You don't need to do that. Craven is getting a film. It's like, dude, these are 20 minute backs. These are 20 minute films. These may as well be YouTube shorts. There's no need to do whole films. And it's like, what's it at the end of Deadpool when they're like, yeah, they're gonna do a Cable movie. Why? Cable's not a strong enough character for his own movie, he isn't. How many Wolverine origin stories do, do you need? It's like, wow, I mean, I've said for, for almost 20 years now that Hollywood ran out of ideas 15 plus years ago. I felt that in 2004, where it's like, dude, you motherfuckers have run out of ideas already. So for me, it's one of them ones that it frustrates me no end. And then, and then finally, they start making films where it's like, all right, now you're using the good villains. But then the way they went storyline wise made no sense. Case in point, Venom. Venom. How are you going to have Venom with no Peter Parker? That's an, that's an, that's an antagonist with no protagonist. It's pointless. It really is pointless because the way they set it up in the animated series and they did it so well where they had Eddie Brock feeling aggrieved and feeling hard done by because of Spider-Man. But in Venom, you ain't got that. And then what's it? There's going to be Venom 2, something like Enter Carnage or something like that. And it's like, well, you introduced the Carnage symbiote, but didn't you introduced another symbiote and that annoyed me at no end as well. It's a symbiote. God damn, and it's like, all of these, all of these little things that end up as the big things, it's like, Venom, now he's a, now he's a baby face, he's a good guy. Anti-hero, no he's not an anti-hero, he's an out and out good guy. They turned him baby face in one film when he was, no, he's a raw heel. And it's one of them where it's, where it's like, uh, it, I said it frustrates the hell out of me because it's not difficult to get these storylines right. I said, you can literally just rip off the animated series from the 90s for X-Men, for Spider-Man, and you can get movies out of them. Like with the five seasons of X-Men, the animated series, you could literally, you could easily get eight, nine movies out of that. You could have Gambit and, you could have Gambit and Rogue and have their stories told as backstories and show how they came together. With Rogue Story, you could add in Mystique. Not, and Mystique is not a main player, not a main character. Mystique is a side character, but they tried to push her as a main eventer, and it's like, no. It's like, no, it doesn't work. But again, with Hollywood, it's a case of they're just making movies out of literally anything. Ant-Man and the Wasp. Really, Ant-Man and the Aquaman, what? To borrow, to, what's it? to borrow um, a line from The Rock from 2003. Aquaman, oh yeah, that dude that talks to the fish. What's that dude? No. <laughs> it's like, I don't care who you put in that suit. That's a cartoon at best. And they basically parody Aquaman in, I swear they basically parody Aquaman in SpongeBob SquarePants. So I'm not gonna take that, I'm not gonna take Aquaman seriously. And as, as well, Ant-Man and the Wasp. It's like when I heard about that film, I thought that was a rip. I thought that was a joke. It's like, it's like, oh, okay, cool. Right, so, um, 
if I if I was in one of those Hollywood um, what's it pitch meetings where I'm hearing where I'm hearing oh okay cool let's um, yeah let's hear your ideas and someone comes up to me with Ant Man I'm like um, nah <laughs> I'm like nah don't like that in the words of Hulk Hogan that doesn't work for me brother why why does Ant Man not work for you um, because look I have a foot. And you know what I can do with that foot to the ant? Gone. Done. <laughs> that film lasts a minute. That ain't even a YouTube short. That's an, in that's an Instagram highlight. <laughs> it's one of them ones. It's like Ant-Man. Same with the wasp. Wasp, same gimmick. Where it's like, oh, okay, well, let's do Ant-Man and the wasp. Well, I've just taken care of Ant-Man. Oh, wait, hold on. There's a can of Raid on that shelf. Can you get me that, please? Right, here's a wasp. There's a wasp flying around this room. Here's my can of Raid. Psh, done. Film over. So, how they're getting films out of Ant-Man and the Wasp? No. No. Not for me, mate. No. That and Aquaman. It's like, what's your power? I can talk to the fish. I can talk to the fish. Yeah, whatever. Next. <laughs> Next. Not interested. But Hollywood is literally, as I said, they are just, God, just every, oh, God. It's just frustrating because then, as I said, they go and tell crappy stories. But because the success of a film is pretty much, is literally based on the money it makes and superhero movies are like printing money, they keep doing it. Like Christopher Nolan. Look at the amazing job he did with the Batman trilogy with Batman Begins The Dark Knight and The Dark Knight Rises and then they're like oh we're going to do Batman versus Superman you couldn't even let that simmer for five years ten years whatever, whatever. I would have loved for, for Nolan series to have stood there for 10-15 years and been like right this is what Batman should be this is the definitive Batman and then they say Batman v Superman and it's like dude no no, it's like Batman v Superman. It's like that. I always said that film should be five minutes long. You got two, two and a half, maybe three minutes worth of dialogue explaining both backstories, and then Batman and Superman meet. Oh, I'm I'm Batman, and I'm going to take you down, Superman. Superman just looks at him, backhands him. Batman's dead. Film over. Roll credits for a minute. So it's one of them where it's like. Again, it's another one where it's like, dude, shouldn't even be a YouTube short. That's an Instagram highlight or a Twitter fleet. So it's like, I, it, 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 I said it irks me. It really does irk me the way Hollywood has ran through this. And as I said about storytelling, now I've watched a lot of TV with good storytelling. Stuff like Marcella, which season three was tremendous. Marcella... The Drowning with Jill Halfpenny. It was one of them was starring Jill Halfpenny. And it's one of them ones where there's so many other shows I could name with great storytelling. And even in sitcoms, like Superstore, that you look at Community, you look at, which I'd love to see a film of that, by the way. Six seasons in a movie. Um, shout out to John Oliver, too. But it's one of them ones where say like, you look at that, you look at those, those um, programs, where they're only going five to six seasons. F is for family. It's ending after a fifth season. Bojack Horseman ended after a fifth season. And it's like, dude, like you're ending these, like Netflix are ending these after five seasons. And then what's it, Superstore is ending now as well. I think they were on a, I think they were on a fifth season. So it's like these shows are ending after five, six seasons. But these superhero movies are constantly getting rebooted, 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 and they're a shower of crap. But then you've got shows like it, but then you've got, you got shows that are only going either one season, two seasons, maybe three. And it's like, dude, they're actually telling great stories. Oh, man, but if, I said it irks the hell out of me. But then you look at a show like, say, Chewing Gum, for instance. God, what a pile of crap that was. I don't, I mean, no, no disrespect to Michaela Co Coel, no disrespect to her, but at the end of the day, yeah, I know she wrote that show, and the fact, but the fact is, show's awful, 
That show is awful. That's the, de the very definition of throwing shit balls against the wall and hoping something's going to stick. And I think that got renewed for two seasons. I think that got two seasons. And it's like, dude, that shouldn't have even gotten one. And for me, a lot of these entities, a lot of these television entities, like in Netflix, your Amazon Primes, and all that are so desperate for content, they'll take any old crap and they'll push it to the moon. And a lot of these Hollywood, a lot of these Hollywood entities are the same with the superhero movies, that they'll literally put out anything. And once and when they have good ones, they run them into the ground with crappy stories that ain't told properly. And no emotional investment. Transformers. Transformers, the 80s cartoon, told brilliant stories, but the films, nothing. Thank you very much, Michael Bay. Shed load of special effects, which look amazing, but there's no story. So it's like, oh my God. It, it is utterly frustrating when you see TV and movies where stories are not told properly. And I believe that storytelling is very much a lost art. And because all of these entities are chasing money only, and are just and are literally just chasing that buck chasing chasing those subscribers in the case of Netflix Amazon among others especially Netflix with their high turnover of content where they're canceling shows after a couple of seasons no matter how well they're doing Bojack Horseman could have went on for for a decade at least that could easily have went one season a year F is for family could have gone on for, could go on for more but it's one of them where it's like they're cutting these, they're cutting the legs out of these shows after, after what's it, five seasons, no matter how well they're doing in the ratings. If something's doing good in the ratings, guess what you shouldn't do? Cancel it. <laughs> That's what you shouldn't do, unless it's offensive. But it's, but Bojack Horseman wasn't. Archer, loved the fact that it's still continuing after the rumours a few years ago that it was going to end after season 10. So it's like... <sighs> You've got so much good, there's so much good content out there and I've mentioned a few examples of my, some of my favorites, but it's, I just hate when stories are told badly or stories are rushed. It's like the boondocks. I was hoping that would come back with John Witherspoon passing. I can't see that happening now. And that's a real shame because season four was terrible without Aaron Magruder at the helm. So again, Sony, Sony Pictures chasing that cheap buck by putting out a boondock season that had probably two good episodes in it and that was it. So it's one of them where, I said, irks the hell out of me when it's so easy to do, but so often it's done badly in terms of films and television and with storylines. <sighs> but yeah, I just wanted to have a little rant about film and television and my issues with it. I said, there's some really good stuff out there. There's some stuff I'm really enjoying. But there's a lot of stuff that, to be perfectly frank, I don't really enjoy. But, hey, it's one of them ones. It's all about making money, isn't it? <laughs> Sadly, it's all about making money. <sighs> but anyway, my name is Straight Shooting LJ, and I'd like to know your views as well. Comment section is down below. Down where? Not on the Liverpool badge. <laughs> it's down there. Comment section is down below. I'd like to know your views. Twitter.com forward slash at sorry twitter.com forward slash l s s l j a at s s l j a on twitter love to know your views youtube.com forward slash l j a productions 07 facebook.com forward slash straight shoot in no g at the end of shooting l j a facebook.com forward slash straight shoot in l j a this has been another episode of the straight shooting rants i will see you soon and let me know your views on film and tv What's the, what programs are you enjoying and why? And also, hey, what programs have you not enjoyed? What films have you watched and thought, that was a load of dog turd. I'm not getting those hours of my life back. Especially during these lockdowns, during pandemics. But anyway, here's one of them ones. I have been straight shooting LJ and until next time, I will see you later. Thanks for your time, peeps. Tweet with me, follow me at SSLJA. Our comment section is below. Let me know your views.